Hey folks, how you all doing? So today I'm going to be ranking all 30 studio albums by Elvis Costello. This has been a mammoth task. It's taken me close on two and a half, three months to re-listen to every album I have just so I could get a fair ranking. Um, yeah, it's just a monumental task doing it. Um, I haven't done his um, soundtrack album, classical stuff. Um, or the new basement tapes so 30 standard Elvis Costello studio albums uh, it was interesting to note while I was doing this actually um, and come up with my list that 8 of his first 11 albums appear in my top 10 um, so yeah that shows you where his the quality of his material really was um there's only one album in his entire career out of 30 that I do not like, but I still like some tracks off it. And I actually love 15 of his 30 studio albums. Um, so it's loving 15 out of 30, liking or really liking another 14, and disliking one overall. Um, so yeah, just an just a absolute monumental task going through these. I only have um, three or four albums on... Um, vinyl the rest are on compact disc there's going to be two surprises coming up somewhere through this ranking um, so stay tuned and watch it you don't know where they're going to be I'm not going to drop hints but there's going to be um, two things coming up that you know you may find interesting other than the rankings anyway I'll go through these as quick as I can because there is 30 to go we're up to about the two minute mark already and I haven't even done anything so here we go at number 30 on my list I have where is it? There it is. Wise Up Ghost um, from 2013. This was recorded with Jimmy Fallon's um, studio band, The Roots. Um, now, The Roots are a pretty jammy kind of band that can improvise on the fly um, really well. They're just they're just a great impro, uh, improv band. Um, Elvis Costello is a calculated songwriter, in my opinion, who is consciously precise with the with his music and those two opposing styles of you know improv and calculated songwriting or songmanship just doesn't work well together um i get it he loves jamming with them you know he's friends with the guys from the roots but um this album just doesn't work for me um yeah i couldn't even really name two songs that i really really love on this album there's nothing to love um, but yeah it's an okay album I guess it's the only one I don't like and it does come in at 4 out of 10 at number 29 on my list I have oh, where is it I'm used to holding these up with my uh, and there you are um, for the stars um, from 2001 um, recorded with Swedish opera singer and Sophie von Otter. Um, some Elvis Costello originals on here, but mainly covers. It does work well. Um, at times, I think their voices offset each other really well, even though they're two total extremes of voices. I think the song selection is really good on here, especially the cover versions. They both play their part really well. Um, but at just 18 tracks long, I just feel this album is just a touch too long for me. Um, but yeah, it's a pleasant listen. It does come in at you know, 5 out of 10, so it is a passable mark. At number 28 on my list, we have 2003's North. Um, fans either love or loathe this one, um, generally speaking. I can take or leave this album. Um... It's a load of torch songs, basically. Um, it's very classical. It's very jazzy sounding. Um, but it just doesn't really lift the pace for me. Again, another 5 out of 10 album. Number 27 on my list. We go to 2020's Hey Clockface. Um, album is bookended with two spoken word pieces which sound really pretentious to me um, there's lots of hints of blues jazz and rock on here the album's passable but it does sound clumsy and slapped together in places you know some of it's quite quite good maybe it's the running order of the songs i don't like i don't know but it just sounds just clumsy and basically thrown together 
Um, album comes in at five and a half out of ten. At number 26 on my list, we go to 1989 with um, Spike. Uh, lots of late 80s production on here. Too many styles thrown in. Just sounds clumsy. Um, it sounds thrown together, just like um, Hey Clockface. Um, for the for the most part, there are some interesting songs on here, but it's just not um, as good as it probably could be. There's a couple of ones written with Elvis, uh, Paul McCartney that were obviously rejects from the Flowers in the Dirt thing um, that he did with Paul McCartney, and he got the second-rate song, sadly. But yeah, it's not a bad album. Veronica basically does sum up this album for me. And that comes in at 5.8 out of 10. At number 25 on my list, I have um, 1996's All This Useless Beauty. Um, this is a collection of songs he had lying around for a few years and he had intended for other people to sing. Um, it is a cohesive album despite the fact that they are individual songs written for other people that never eventuated. Um, but the songs actually do fit together. I think um, the running order of the songs is just brilliant on this considering they are just one-off songs tacked together. Um, and it does work really well considering it actually wasn't meant to be an album. But it does only come in at just over 6 out of 10. Um, number 24 on my list. Um, I have the Juliet Letters. Um, one voice, a string quartet, that's it. Um, the album doesn't fare as well as I thought it would. Um, considering I really, really liked this when it first came out. It's just sort of gone backwards for me over the years um, it's a well crafted collection of songs but at 20 minutes long it just seems to drag and it's a struggle to finish the entire album in one listen so that's the reason that's at number 24 6.3 out of 10 at number 23 on my list we come to the first vinyl I have um, 1984's Goodbye Cruel World listen this is a solid collection of songs but it's just let down by that horrid 1980s production and just the overuse of synthesizers which really doesn't go well with Elvis Costello. Keys do, as in pianos, go well with Elvis Costello but synthesizers really isn't his thing in my opinion. Um, 6.4 out of 10. Next up um, we have 2006's The River in Reverse. Um, where is it? Right there. Oh, let's get this right, about right for you. There we are, um, with Alan Toussaint. Um, he wrote most of the tracks, um, but there is a few written, co-written with Elvis Costello. As expected with Alan Toussaint's style, um, it's full of jazz and R&B vibes. It's a really good album, surprisingly, and it does work really well. I like Elvis when he tends to do collaborations because it brings something different out of him. Um, like the Sophie Van Otter one. It's a good album, but it's just too long, and that's the only problem I have with that one. This one is really good. Um, comes in at a solid 7 out of 10. At number 21 on my list, here we go. We've got another compilation album, or collaboration album, I should say. A Painted From Memory, 1998. Um, collaboration with Burt Bacharach. Um, Costello in crooner mode here. Solid album. Two of the great songwriters. In fact, one of the great songwriters of all time in Bacharach. And um, one of the greatest songwriters of his generation in Elvis Costello. Very, very good album. Um, when I knew this was going to be released, I remember thinking to myself, oh my god, this cannot work, it won't work. It's just two, two different poles there, two different polars. It's just not going to not gonna work, but it does. It works surprisingly well, and it comes in at 7.3 out of 10 for me. At number 20 on my list, this may surprise a few people. Um... I've actually got Get Happy from 1980. This is his R&B soul album. Um, it's a lot lower than I thought it would initially be when I started listening back to these albums. Um, but maybe by this stage, because I didn't listen to them in um, 
release order I just randomly picked them out and this would have been one of the last ones I picked for sure and I think I was pretty much all Costelloed out by this stage but I can only do it the rankings on what I hear at the time when I'm listening to them um, there's 20 tracks on here I just think there's just a uh, probably four or five tracks too long um, but yeah it's still a very very good album coming in at seven and a half out of ten number 19 on my list we go to 1994 with brutal youth um, solid album from the get-go feels almost punkish post-punk in places and then power pop in other it's just a really really solid album i don't think there's a bad song on here there's not really many bad songs in elvis costello's career anyway but yeah very very good song 7.7 7 out of 10. at number 18 on my list um we go to 2010 for national ransom uh a lot of styles on here tim pan alley rock bluegrass country um although there's nothing bad on here to me it feels like a few of these tracks are just leftover tracks from the previous album secret profane and sugarcane um there just seems to be a slight lack of direction with this one and it feels slightly disjointed but overall the songs are good enough to make it into my top 20 7.7 .7 out of 10. number 17 on my list we go to 2008 momo fuku um solid album lots of rock on here lots of country um written recorded and released within a few few short weeks um album gets its title from the creator of instant raman or ramen noodles um who's the guy's japanese his, his um his name is momofuku um and it was given that title due to the speed of the creation of the album excellent album i actually love this album um borderline love it so i'll call it love for this um thing so we'll say 17 of these albums i actually love 7.8 out of 10. number 16 on my list um we go to 1982 for imperial bedroom um as i said love just about every album from here on in including the one i've just mentioned um it's poppy it's jazzy it's infused with rock and the quality of the studio production absolutely shows through this one um we had jeff emmerich um doing the engineering turning and twiddling the knobs on this one it shows excellent excellent production some of these songs are sort of not the best but the production actually lifts them to just a just a high standard eight out of ten for me now we go to the first surprise that i mentioned earlier um before i started this and we'll have this um, a lot of people outside the UK probably don't know that Elvis Costello's father Ross McManus was an entertainer he was a songman a showman um, back in started in the late 1950s and went through to about late 80s early 90s when he retired Ross McManus his father was actually playing at the um, um, what is it the royal command performance in 1963 the one where the beatles were there and they said you know what you in the cheaper sheet seats um clap your hands the rest of you rattle your jewelry ross mcmanus was actually there and he actually got the beatles autographs and he got them to sign it to declan um for his son elvis who was five or six at the time and a big beatle fan and when you look back it's just amazing that um you know 24 25 years later that same little kid who was five or six would actually be writing and recording with a Beatle, a Paul McCartney. Who would have thought Paul McCartney would have even thought that in 1963, you know? Um, but anyway, I have an album here um, by Ross McManus. Lynn actually found this for me. Um, Ross McManus sings Elvis Presley's Golden Hits. This album was originally released in 1970 or 71. Um, I think it's the only album he ever released he did release quite a few singles um, but they are cover versions um, and this he actually does a, a really good version of most of these songs he's actually he's not a great singer he's he can hold a tune and he's good at what he does and these songs are very listenable there's not a bad 
um, version on here. So yeah, Elvis Presley's dad, Ross McManus, for those who don't know. Back into the list now. I'm just going to have a drink first. So top 15 now. Um, this time we head to 2018 um, with Look Now. Um, Crooner Elvis is back on this one. Um, a couple of tunes written here with Burt Bacharach. And one or two with Carol King. I think it might be one, but there could be two. Um, so you get the vibe of the album. Bacharach, Carol King, Crooner. Um, absolute classy album. 8.2 out of 10. This one could have easily have ended up in my top 10. As could any of these albums from here on in. Um, but of course, you know, albums have to finish somewhere. Really, really good album of his crooner type material if you haven't got it give it a listen number 14 on my list um, we go to 2022 this is his most recent album um, the boy named if um, it's his first real rock album since the late 1980s so you know 30 odd years 30 plus years since he made a bona fide rock album um, just shows Elvis Costello still has it when he wants to rock out. You know, there's a lot of songs on here that are punkish, post-punk, you know, guitar-driven sort of pre-new wave. So similar to a lot of the early stuff he was doing on his first four albums, five albums, etc. Um, his voice still still sounds good, and it really stands up on this album. Well worth a listen if you haven't heard it or haven't got it. Eight point two out of ten. So, number 13 on my list, we go to 1995, um, the Kojak Variety. I am not a fan of covers albums, as you guys who regularly watch my channel know. They generally come in pretty low on rankings, but um, this is a covers album. Um, it's just a really, really good album. There's covers from The Supremes, Bob Dylan, Little Richard, The Kinks, Drifters, Nat King Cole, etc., etc. It's just a real variety of songs. Um, and at least half these I actually was not familiar with. So a lot of these felt like new songs to me as opposed to covers. Um, but as I said, half it, I knew half of them. They're really good. The other half I really, really love. Um, because I wasn't aware of the originals. Great album, 8.3 out of 10. At number 12, we go to 2002. And I have When I Was Cruel. Um, this is an interesting album. Has some unusual instruments in the mix for variety. Um, love the brass section on several of these tracks. That is a real album lifter for me. Anything with brass section and bagpipes. Not spread throughout entire albums spasmodically on songs here and there across albums and that really lifts albums for me and this does it um, this album would probably be around 17 maybe 18 on my list if it wasn't for the brass section as I said which really really lifts these songs on here um, eight and a half out of ten number 11 on my list we go to 1991 uh, mighty like the rose similar in vain to spike um, in its soft rock approach a um, couple of co-writes here with Paul McCartney that were obviously leftovers from Paul's Flowers in the Dirt album and then his Spike album um, but that's that's not an issue I um, there's no real issue with this album at all I'm just saying it's not an issue having co-writes with Paul McCartney um, it's a much better quality album than the material he had on Spike in my opinion and uh really unlucky not to make the top 10 8.6 out of 10 number 10 on my list we go to 1986 and blood and chocolate an album of straightforward old-fashioned rock and roll this is probably his last real rock album um, prior to boy named if um, experts and so-called you know music critics have called this album prototype grunge um, in the sound and the vibe of the album which means this album was seven or eight years ahead of its time unless Elvis Costello had been you know up to um, Seattle 
and maybe seen all these grunge bands in pubs and decided he could do something with that sound i don't know but yeah an excellent excellent album comes in at a worthy 8.7 out of 10. number nine 2004 we have the delivery man i actually saw him on this tour when he come to australia um great performance that was the last time i saw office costello live um there's alt rock alternative um just straightforward rock on here at least half the album as sort of country tinge songs so it's probably half rock half country um three duets on here with the fabulous emmy lou harris and one with lucinda williams both excellent country singers which is why you get that country vibe um tom waits actually rates this album as one of his top 10 albums of all time and you know i can i can understand that i can see it um yeah just a great great album of country and rock stuff from elvis costello 8.9 out of 10. number eight on my list and um, we go to 1983 with punch the clock um r b soul crooner new wave um excellent excellent album showing the diversity of what he was capable of doing at such a young age and you know only a few albums into his career um contains three of probably his greatest singles of all time every day i write the book pills and soap an incredible ship building um and those three songs are not even highlights from the album to me it just shows how much of a consummate professional he was in his songwriting in that time in the 1980s that those three songs are not even the best songs on this album it's just it's absolutely mind-blowing most artists would be happy with one of those songs in their career and he's got three of them and they're not even the best on the album nine out of ten number seven on my list we go to 1978 i've got this year's model his second album um it's a more than respectable follow-up to his brilliant debut album which is one of the greatest debut albums of all time in my opinion um again like the debut it's full of that um punk post-punk new wave you know f young angry man full of angst um, it's just impossible to fault great great album 9.1 out of 10. number six a uh, bit of a change of a pace here um we go to 2009 with secret profane and sugar cane um like king of america it's a bona fide americana album he seems to sit very easily and slip very easily into the americana sounds um when he does do it because it's sort of pseudo country and he's very good at country anyway you know this album is tight yet uncluttered um it's full of rootsy earthy beauty and it's certainly up there with the best americana albums of all time in my opinion regardless of who the artist did it's just absolute classy americana and just a classy um elvis costello album in general 9.1 out of 10 next up we go to 1981 um for trust this is my fifth favorite album of all time so many styles on here from tim pan alley through new wave to punk to rockabilly to country it's just an absolute master class of songwriting when you consider you know news lace sleeves and clubland aren't even probably in my top eight songs on this album it shows you the master class and depth of songwriting skills that Elvis Costello had yeah they're probably the catchiest songs and you know should have been released as the singles off the album but they're certainly not the best songs on there by a long shot not pardon me 9.2 out of 10 number four on my list actually no before we get into the top four um, I'll give you my second little tidbit story so this album um taking liberties is a compilation album comes from um 1980 it was released in australia and uh the us and canada i believe um it had fallen success after um pump it up and oliver's army and they were trying to draw up interest in Elvis costello again so i ended up buying this um mid 19 fast forward 
mid to late 1980s, I think 86-ish. Um, Elvis Costello toured Australia here. I saw him on that tour. And um, yeah, I was at the airport waiting. Elvis Costello comes through. Um, he's on his own. He's got a little bag with him. He's got his shades on. And I'm looking around. There's no one there. That's like, oh my God, he's not with anyone. No one's rushing up to get his autograph. What the hell? So I went up to him with this album. And as you can see, Elvis Costello signed it. And um, in the process of signing it, we had a little bit of discussion. He was waiting for his driver and vehicle to turn up. So we had a bit of a discussion and talking about things. He said he'd come into the show. Yeah, I'm coming to the show. Um, what would you like to hear? And I mentioned two or three album tracks, deep cuts, I guess you'd call it. And he sort of laughed and he said, well, the majority of people just want to hear, you know, the hits and what's on the latest album, blah, blah, blah. So we're talking. Then he goes... Um, so what's your favourite album? And stupid me, I wasn't thinking. I was a bit starstruck at the time that I'm having this full-blown conversation with Elvis Costello. And I said, oh, Brothers in Arms. And didn't twig at the time. And he sort of had his shades and he pulled them down a bit and he looked over them and he said, I can't remember writing that one. <laughs> I guess you've got to be there at the, at the uh, moment to appreciate that little one. But there's me all starstruck and what's your favourite album? He obviously meant favorite album of his and there's me stupid head being you know um brothers in arms which was a huge hit at the time obviously and yeah he just sort of laughed and <laughs> said i hope you enjoy the show and walked off when his car rocked up but yeah i had about a five five or six minute maybe a little bit longer little conversation with elvis costello and he could see i was a fan because i knew a lot of the album tracks and whatever yeah just a genuine guy he had time for the fans and um I'm like a couple of other singers that I've met that really don't. Um, one of them was Tim Finn, and another one, Gene Simmons, really wasn't um, fan based, and neither was Paul Weller on the occasion I met him. Um, but yeah, Elvis Costello, you know, he was obviously waiting, didn't want to waste time, but yeah, it was just good of him to stand around and talk for that few minutes and not think I was a total retard. Well, maybe he did, but he didn't show it. Anyway, back to it. Top four albums by Elvis Costello. At number four, we go to 1979. Armed Forces. Um, My Aim is True. This year's Model. And um, this is third album. They're the holy trilogy of Elvis Costello, in my opinion. If there's three albums that anyone needs of Elvis Costello, apart from compilations, it's My Aim is True. This year's Model and Armed Forces absolutely brilliant from the get-go what a fantastic trilogy of albums probably not many artists could have a great three albums like them in a row bang 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 absolutely incredible um so yeah 9.4 out of 10 for that album at number three on my list one of those albums i just mentioned comes in and that is my aim is true um 1977 um top Ten debut albums of all time possibly even top five depending what mood I'm in on any given day recorded over a 24-hour period um, the album's been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame for albums um, excellent album there's no low lights on here nothing stands out everything is a constant high benchmark absolutely incredible one of the greatest albums of all time certainly one of the greatest debut albums of all time do yourself a favor go and listen to this if you've never heard it 9.5 out of 10 that leaves two albums dedicated fans of elvis costello will certainly know what's coming up um and they're probably both surprises to most people a bit eyebrow raises but anyway it's my choice this is what it is. So at number two, my second favourite Elvis Costello album of all time is 1986's King of America, full of country, folk, bluegrass, jazz, and a couple of up-tempo rockers thrown in the mix to bring a bit more variety. Let's call this one his first Americana album, for want of a better phrase. Absolutely sheer brilliance in songwriting, playing, and singing. An artist at his best in my opinion other than what he was known for doing which was the new wave post-punk thing absolutely incredible um 
yeah this album actually contains my favorite elvis costello song of all time in indoor fireworks absolutely brilliant if you haven't heard it, this album or even indoor fireworks just go and listen to indoor fireworks and that sums up the strength and quality of this album this is my number two elvis costello album of all time which leads one which a lot of people are going to go oh no really this is an album that divides people um i don't know people that don't like this album but certainly most people would have put this my number one album probably somewhere between 22 and probably 15 maybe but this is my favorite elvis costello album of all time 1981's almost blue it's a country album i love country music um, but that's not why i love this album i just think it's a fantastic album in its own right it's a covers album yes covers albums don't rate high with me um, but thankfully most of these songs border the obscure so you know people that just like um popular country music won't know a lot of these songs them these are more deep cuts um the only dedicated country music fans would love and i'm not that dedicated i love country music but not deep cuts um with a lot of these artists that are, were unknown to me before i owned this album um it just slips into country and americana mode so easily effortlessly and it just feels like he belongs there it's like it's you know it's not a forced genre for him to go in it's something that he just slips into like a good you know an old pair of tracky pants or shorts or a nice pair of slippers this is what it feels like to me he just breezes into it so easy um probably the best covers album in history in my opinion i just think this is absolutely fabulous um good year for the roses was the main hit off this if you know that song and love that song you would love this whole album it's simply gorgeous elvis costello's greatest album of all time in my opinion that's only my opinion and um, that comes in at 9.9 .9 out of 10 for me great stuff anyway guys sorry to bore you for 32 minutes i hope you enjoyed my two little stories um well my show and tell of his dad's album and my little time when i met elvis costello and how you know much of a gentleman he was and fan orientated um anyway guys leave your um lists of your top 10 albums or whatever you know in the comments section below i'm sorry to bore you as i said anyway guys um stay tuned for the next one stay safe take care all for now catch you around and bye